know, this is Palace Confidential, the weekly Male Plus royal show film just a stone's throw from Kensington Palace. Here to discuss the comings, goings and all the scandal of the week is the Daily Mail's royal editor, Rebecca English, the Mail's Saturday diarist, Richard Eden and our columnist, Sarah Vine. And here's what you have to look forward to this week. Goodbye or just au revoir as Harry and Meghan step down from royal duties. We look at the very latest. And one body language expert gives us her views on the pair's awkward farewell. And from royal trips to namastes, we look at the royal family's response to the coronavirus. But first, the week went from bad to worse for poor Prince Harry after an awkward final encounter at a Commonwealth service with the rest of his family. It was revealed earlier in the year that he had spoken on the phone to teenage environmental activist Greta Thunberg. Or so he thought, and here's some of what he said. Not a, it's not an easy time and the world is in a troubled place and well, unfortunately the world is being led by some very sick people to stop any change from happening, whether it's because of their own bias, whether it's because of uh, the, the fact that it's going to that it's going to change um, the way that they are able to behave themselves or, or just because, as I said earlier, because they may be sick. You know, we are tired of everything that is happening, especially around Europe, political crisis. And, you know, in your country, I've heard about it, we should be in, in the Union, but uh, we are one European family, I think. No, completely. I think, I think for many, many years we've been at... Um, not at a tipping point, but every year we get closer. And once we once we get over that tipping point, um, then you know it, it all changes. But at the moment, the, the the fossil fuel industry and certain presidents around the world are driving completely the wrong agenda. And I think the most important thing to do is, you know, I, I don't mind saying this to you guys. Um, I think the mere fact that Donald Trump is is pushing the the coal industry so big in America. Um, he, he has blood on his hands because the, the, the effect that that has on the climate and on the island nations far, far away, again, out of sight, out of mind. But we've, visit, we've visited those places, and I'm sure you have as well. Um, people's lives have been completely destroyed. People are dying every single month by some form of natural disaster that has been created uh, from this huge change uh, in, in our climate. Well, of course, that wasn't really Greta, but the work of Russian pranksters, as we all know now, and earlier the Queen's former spokesman, Dickie Arbiter, gave us his thoughts on the matter. The prank call was very unfortunate, and it's one of those things that you leave yourself wide open to if you're moving out of the system. Now, had Harry been at Frogmore Cottage, that call could well have been put through either the Buckingham Palace switchboard or the Windsor Castle switchboard, and there would have been a safety net. But instead, they are on Vancouver Island, they're in rented accommodation. Somehow, the pranksters got hold of the phone number and dialed right through. And it is unfortunate. I don't think Harry gave away anything. Uh, there are various people saying that he shouldn't have said anything about Trump and he shouldn't have said anything about the uh, British Prime Minister, but he didn't say anything untoward. The fact that he was caught twice, it does make you wonder how they are serviced at um, on Vancouver Island, what sort of backup they've got, what sort of staff they've got. But certainly something like that should never have happened and wouldn't have happened had they been in the UK. The Queen got caught on one occasion on a visit to Canada. Uh, she got uh, caught and was chatting to a Canadian radio station, thinking that she was talking to uh, the then Prime Minister, uh, but she wasn't. And it does happen from time to time. And again, the Queen being in Canada, uh, it, it missed that safety net of Buckingham Palace switchboard. I think what was unfortunate at the Commonwealth Day service was the lack of communication between brothers, between sisters-in-law. Uh, it showed on Harry's face that he was still very angry, uh, and we really do, and he really does need to get to the bottom of it. Meghan, consummate actress, she didn't show any emotion whatsoever. She smiled. Um, well trained as an actor uh, and that's what you do uh, and she put on a very good show Harry quite the opposite uh, and there was anger and you could feel even watching it on television you could feel the the, the body language of animosity uh, that he was showing towards the rest of the family he just didn't communicate and that is a great shame and it needs to be nipped in the bud somebody needs to get hold of him find out exactly what is wrong and, and bash a few heads together and get them together again. Because while he said in a television interview fairly recently, he and William will always be brothers and they'll always be there for each other. 
Uh, it certainly didn't look like it at the Commonwealth Day service. So, Rebecca, what makes this worse is that Prince Harry called them, is my understanding. Well, they initially contacted this firm of American showbiz agents that now represent him and Meghan, and it seemed like they literally just pinged the email onto him. Which is extraordinary. No checks. He then called them from his own mobile phone without withholding the number. I mean, it's astonishing. It really is. Uh, and, and quite a bad look, right, Richard? Bad look for Harry? I mean, what shocked me, uh, genuinely shocked me from um, reading the transcript was um, the sort of contempt that he spoke about the rest of the royal family, really. It was very much, we're completely separate from them, I've got nothing to do with them. It was, it was quite, it was, it was just sad, really, hearing Dismissive, that. Dismissive, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I think the timing, the timing's interesting because it gives us an, an insight into why, you know, because it happened while they were, sort of before they came back to the UK to mm. tell the Queen that they were going. So the timing is quite interesting because it was clear that at that point he was already, he'd already made up his mind. And, you know, I think that gives us, you know, because we all wondered slightly, I slightly wondered why he, why they just sort of came back from holiday and then threw their toys out of the pram. But obviously they'd, they, you know, it was all macerating in his mind and, and, and this sort of animosity towards the family was already there, wasn't it? Now, I, what I want to ask, and anybody feel free to jump in, but to me, it's just astonishing this, I was saying to you earlier, this messianic complex of Prince mm -hmm. Harry's that it seems to speak mm -hmm. to, like completely unquestioning mm -hmm. that this was a genuine conversation mm -hmm. with a genuine activist without any checks or balances. I'm, I'm really shocked by that. What, well, I mean, he is famously, you know, not the cleverest <laughs> got the sharpest tack in the box. I mean, so there's an element, I think, of him just not really thinking it through at all. And of course, the but, thing but, is, if you're Prince Harry, you've grown up with everyone thinking everything through for you. So now you're on your own. You've got to make your own decisions. You've got to stop and think. And he's not there. He's just not there, is he? Well, he made a point in it of saying, you know, my family don't seem to think I'm very worldly, but I was in the army for 10 years. I am. But he really isn't that worldly. No. I mean, he may have done his own shopping no, occasionally, which is very different than that. But they have this kind of very complex private office system yeah. set up where he has a private secretary, two assistants, private secretaries. They would have been the ones that intercepted the email in the first place. And you, you think, well, in fact, I know. I mean, these people are experienced mm. foreign office diplomats, mm. for example. And they would have had enough now to kind of call somebody up, talk it through before the call even got mm. to him mm. but this new showbiz world they're in don't I, think like it's that. just bizarre but how bad how damaging is this really what I'm thinking of particularly is the comments about Donald Trump and yeah. is that I potentially don't think I don't think Harry is important enough to cause a diplomatic incident between America and Britain no. to be honest I just don't I think Donald Trump will probably just think I don't know. I think Donald Trump could start a fight in an empty room. So I well, think, you know, he hasn't done. So I don't. Yeah. Think, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Yeah. But I just, I just think it just shows the extent to which Harry is deluded if he thinks that his life has been, you know, if he thinks that he could just sort of eject himself from the royal family and be a completely normal person. He can't. He needs to be careful and he needs to listen to his family and, you know take precautions. Well, he pontificates a lot in yeah. private, but it's always been in private. Yeah. Now he wants to pontificate yeah. on a world stage, but again, and that does have ramifications. But again, when you're Prince Harry, yeah. and you pontificate, and you're surrounded by mm. sycophants and courtiers, they're mm. not going to tell you to mm. shut up because mm. you're talking nonsense. Mm. Uh, you know, now he lives in a world where people don't have to listen to him because they're not paid to do it. Well, it's so, also it's, it's quite humiliating, isn't it, Richard? That you know they made up fake islands that he sort of oh, sort of like bluffed through yeah. pretending. There was something you know, the, about the great the, environmentalist the locked. He was going to set sail from, from Belarus, Belarus, which is yeah. actually yeah. landing. Yeah. It was like a clever April Fool's, yeah. really, that gradually they cranked <laughs> up the ridiculous nature of it. And I did feel quite I think sorry for him. Maybe Russian viewers would have picked up on um, yeah. some jokes from it. But to Chunky me, Changa, what, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, to me yeah. what it all emphasizes is that the royal family should have made more effort to keep them as part of the family. It just feels a bit like they've been kind of hung out to dry, they've been pushed out there, and now they're out there without the, all those protections he's grown up with. I don't think so at all. I think they've done everything within their power to keep them. I think he just doesn't want to do yeah. it, and he's deliberate. I mean, this is, this is what he wants, you know. Well, and th this brings us on to the very, very awkward family gathering at a Commonwealth yeah. Day service at Westminster the other day, which I think we'll move on to now, where Harry and Meghan were not allowed to join the family VIP procession. Procession, sorry. Alison Ward is a body language expert, and she gave us her views on how body language can give us an insight into the mindset of those royals. This shows a royal family at the Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey just a couple of days ago. Now, what's really interesting about this picture, can you see Prince Charles and Prince William? They're looking sternly ahead. 
and yet Harry is looking to the left. He wants to run for the hills. That's where his future is, to the left. Now, what's also very interesting about this picture is Meghan's facial expressions. She is present, powerful, graceful, and she looks serene. In this picture, what I find really interesting is that Prince William is trying to catch the eye of Kate. But Kate, she's looking straight ahead at the task in hand. When we are in, when we're in that mode where we're looking straight ahead, that's where we're going. Let's get this done. Let's get this over. I'm in my role and I'm going to do it well. Oh, this is a best picture. Here we see the couple, Harry and Meghan, at the Endeavour Funder Awards. This picture speaks volumes. They're under one umbrella, not two umbrellas. The clasping of the hands on the stem of the umbrella. Could they be any closer when they're walking together? This is a couple who are truly passionately in love. Notice Meghan's hand on Harry's shoulder. This is Meghan steering Harry into the future. Now look at Harry. He's looking vulnerable. He's looking down at Meghan. This is really showing who's got the power here. This picture is showing Harry's vulnerability. Some people could say that this is manipulative, but no. She's saying, I've got my Man, we're moving into the future and I'm steering the way forward. Again, look at Harry as he's looking at Meghan, as she steers him, guides him into that entrance, entering into the new future. In comparison, we have got the duty-bound couple here. We have got William and Kate. Their stances are mirroring each other here, which shows what a good, united couple they are. Their body language is telling us they accept their role. They're working as a couple, yet they're very much indi individuals as well, just as Harry and Meghan are. She looks on at him here to check he's OK, which is something they both do is letting her know that he is okay uh, by not moving his head but being very, very present. What's really interesting as well about this couple is that their hands, when they're comfortable, are very loose. Whether you agree with Mexico or not, it can't be denied that Meghan and Harry are head over heels for each other and William and Kate are doing their public duty. The royal family might be getting small, the Fab Four, but whatever happens, it's clear that the individual relationships between the couples are strong. So, Rebecca, in the Daily Mail, you spoke a lot about about this awkwardness, this frostiness between the family and Prince Harry. Can you, what can you tell us about what happened at that event? Yeah, so basically it was all agreed this would be a great event for a last event for them to come to, the family together, the Commonwealth, which is the kind of institution the Queen's most proud of, and they will still retain Harry and Meghan will Commonwealth links after they've left. Then Harry and Meghan realised that they were not going to be allowed to process with the Queen and other senior royals into the Abbey, that they were going to have to take their seats beforehand alongside the Wessexes as kind of more junior members of the and family. Is that <laughs> quite churlish or is that, you know, on point protocol? No, well, some, some years it happens, some years it doesn't, but I think it was... They were, they're quite emotional at the moment and it didn't go down well with them. Their staff could immediately see this looked bad because it looked like they'd already been relegated to the kind of second tier of royalty. But of course these things are never simple with palace offices, there's a lot of toing and froing. Why can't you see it looks like this? No, we think it. In the end it was agreed that William and Kate would kind of hold out an olive branch, step in and sit down with Harry and Meghan instead of taking their places with the Queen. So it all looked like happy families. But, well, that could Except have it didn't. felt a bit condescending, <laughs> couldn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. It, it, and, and that's yeah. the thing. It didn't look like happy families, yeah. so the, the plan didn't really work, unfortunately. But I think it was interesting that the fact that they were... They must have known that the whole world will be watching them because this well, was exactly. there. And that even then they couldn't muster a sort of... You know, they couldn't get it together for the cameras. They I mean, couldn't they, muster a smile. They couldn't even. muster a smile. I mean, they, they, I mean, they must have known, and 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 they it just shows couldn't. How sad they they, they are, actually. So I think the emotion, the upset, is genuine because they mm. couldn't conceal it. You know, when you see people who are properly upset, there's nothing they can do apart from Meghan, yeah. who was on, yeah. wasn't she? Yeah. She yeah. would smile. Yeah. I got my yeah. smile. Yeah. And she was she was completely sort of act, you know, full on smiley Meghan. It's slightly rictusy, yeah. in actually, her role. very much. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But she um, did it brilliantly. Come on, the she whole did, yeah. performance. Oh, she looked amazing. It was a masterclass. Right? It was a masterclass yeah. in sort of game face, um, and uh, quite impressive. But but uh, you could see how upset the the others were. Really genuine. But R Richard, what are the Harry and Meghan defenders <laughs> saying about all of this? Well, I think this whole final week of royal duties for them has just emphasised how much we're going to miss them. You know, it's been a terrific week, and Meghan, when she visited the school in Dagenham. You know, there's no one else in the royal family who could inspire those pupils like that and um, it's going to be such a, a loss um, for everyone, I think.
Mm. Sarah, do you agree with that? I do think it's I do think it's a great shame. I mean, I've I've said this all along. I think they should have given it a bit more time. They should have just, you know, slightly given. You know, I don't think she should have gone to live in Windsor. That's insane. The idea of you know a person like Meghan, who's very much politan, being in a sort yeah. of fusty cottage. What's in wrong the with Windsor? They've got Lego Land. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But you know what I mean. I think I think they should have just come back from their holiday and said, okay, you know, we just need to reset a few things. Let's see if we can make this work. Because I agree. I mean, the stuff that she did in Dag and was wonderful. She's she's a very very warm, um, you know, very likable individual, and and he's very happy with her, and that's really important. She clearly makes Harry happy, um, and and I think that what's playing out here are his. I think when people have babies their childhood often gets really churned up. You know, when you have your own children, mm. your own childhood traumas sort of get churned up. And I think what's, what we're seeing a lot of here is Harry having a sort of crisis that's perhaps been brought on by getting married and having a baby. And he's very emotional. And, and, and I think everyone has always blamed Meghan for this whole thing, but I don't really think it's her as much. I mean, it might be a bit her or it might be half her. I don't know. But I think it's also him. I think he has has deep seated um, resentment towards his own family uh, for, for how they treated his mother and for, for what happened to him as a child. And mm. that's understandable. And I think it's all churning through. And I, and I think that, you know, psychologically, he is obviously quite damaged and and is a bit lost. That's and, fascinating. Yeah. And I, and I, but, so I think unplugging your I mean, for all that you might resent your family, they, you know, it's what you know, and and they love you, and they might not be perfect, but unplugging yourself from that support system, you know, it's he he is now a, a vessel on very his own in a drift, very rough yeah. sea, and I think that's really sad. But Rebecca, do you think there's any sense within the royal family, either with Harry and Meghan or the establishment, that? Thank God that that's done. It's over, but because it doesn't uh, feel 100%. over, does it? Yeah. Well, I think I do think they are, there's a sense now. And it's not just me thinking, there definitely is a sense now, what's done is done, we've got to start, move on. Mm. So they are trying to get this kind of business as usual mm. thing back. But I think people, and I certainly I know, I was very taken aback during that service at the kind of body language and the dealings between William and Harry. It was so cold, and this mm. is two brothers who have been mm. so close, who've lived the most unimaginable mm. life together, you know, in good times as well as bad times, and it just seems so sad that mm. they've they're leaving on terms where they can barely even be mm. even bear to say hello to each other and kate w wouldn't even look at harry and Meghan. no i think obviously kate's it, upset that, because yeah. i think that you know mm. harry's really upset william and obviously she yeah. as his wife has got to deal with the repercussions it, of that it, it does rather look to me heartbreaking like nobody's actually got what they want no so may, mm. maybe no. some distance and some time will well, but you know, we'll we'll sort something out. But watch this space. I think we will never stop talking about this incredible turn of events. To try to limit the family's exposure to the coronavirus, the Queen has apparently been told to stop shaking hands with members of the public. While Prince Charles has adopted an Indian-style Namaste greeting. Is that one of these? Namaste. namaste. Yeah. Very yogi. We asked members of the public what style of greeting they think the royals should be adopting. <laughs> They just go for a hand wave like this, maybe. I don't like all this elbow stuff, and some people have even suggested kicking. What I don't understand is these disposable gloves that you can get. I know it's not nice, but it's only a temporary thing. Why don't people shake hands with those? You know, the royals could lead the way on this. Maybe they can try with their feet. I don't know if they will be likely to do it, but that can be if an ID and. Maybe yes, but also I believe that they will just like not show anything and they will just say like, hello. Um, I haven't really seen much um, upper body movement, so I think they should do a bit of a chest pump perhaps. I think probably the most appropriate thing would be a fist bump. That seems to be civilized and, and acknowledging it. I would say disregard the whole process for the time being. So what would you all suggest the royals start doing to greet the great public, the great British public. Any ideas? Well, I've seen Camilla doing it, and she did the old... <laughs> the elbow, elbow bump. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> live on stage, and actually was giggling about it. I so. mean, it looks so silly. It does look ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe she knew that, and she was laughing. Yeah. And, and actually, I mean, look, in these kind of difficult times, don't we need a bit of laughter? What about no, the fun? I, I think it's, it's <laughs> got to be a royal wave. Come on, they've been perfecting that all their lives. It needs to be a very regal wave. Or a salute. 
Oh, nice. Salute, I yeah. like a bit of a That's military so thing. That's so patriotic, yeah, Sarah. a little salute. <laughs> but they don't we have to, I mean, do, I mean, curtsying is a great form of coronavirus mm. greeting, isn't it? Because it doesn't require any contact. We can't have the mm. Queen curtsying. No, no, we can't. But, <laughs> but, but we obviously have to curtsy mm. to the Queen. So, yeah. you know, she could just stand there and look approving. <laughs> they need to find something to do, because Charles was saying at the Prince's Trust event yeah. this week, he kept them to go and shake hands, and no. then was like, I, I don't, don't actually know what to do. Quite well. no. That's very sweet. And I That's... think people react well yeah. to it. And, yeah. you know, there's always the Japanese bow, yeah. that, that old chestnut. Or the yeah. nod. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think Charles likes the namaste, because he's a bit of a sort of hippie, really, isn't yes, he? Yes, he is. Yeah. You know, it's got nice intentions behind it. Anyway, we can ponder that one all day, but that is all we've got time for on Palettes Confidential today. Thank you very much to my guests, Rebecca, Sarah and Richard. And thanks to you, the viewers, for watching and we'll see you next time.